Welcome to Matt Parker's Maths Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the Maths Solution this week is for the train, what is the minimum amount of fuel to get to Party Town Puzzle. So this is the one where you had a train and it could fill up from a infinite reservoir of coal and then as it traveled along it would use the fuel up but of course it could dump it as it went. I'll link to the original puzzle video below and the goal was can you get this train over here to Party Town as represented by this bottle using the minimal amount of fuel possible. Now the kind of step zero puzzle was is there a limit to how far this train can go and it can actually go as far as you need. And that's because if you think about it, it could just go like a third of a tank's worth, dump a third of its fuel, and then go a third of a tank's worth back. And because there's an infinite amount of fuel where it starts, it could just do that, you know, an arbitrary number of times, and you can build up an arbitrarily large stockpile of fuel here, which means you could then repeat the process. And so actually, if you're prepared to be inefficient, you can go at any, any distance you want, as far as you fancy. However, if you want to do it efficiently, that's a different story. So people were sending in what they thought the minimum amount of fuel was. Thank you so much everyone who sent in solutions. I have all the answers and I have what people sent in here. So I'm going to put up on the screen over there next to me. Okay, so what you're seeing there is what I've got on my screen uh, here and the correct answer for the minimum amount of fuel required on a 500 mile tank to go 800 miles to party town was 1,733.3333, so on, um, miles worth of fuel. On the form we specified two decimal places. A lot of people thought we were trying to psych them out. Like that was like a trick because if you get a whole like a whole number answer, you're like, well, why did they say two decimal points? No, we just thought that would be easy. So I can't guarantee in the future, if we ask for a given number of decimal points, if that implies or does not imply it's a whole number answer or not. We're not going to let uh, clues like that slip out. I will let you know, though, that we don't particularly care about rounding. So in this case, we gave points for both 1733 0.33 and 1733.34. So both of those were correct because we just, for the most part, we want to be able to automate, because we get thousands of entries, we need to be able to automate checking which ones are correct. So both of those, boom, you got points. We also did give part marks. So slightly penalized if people had an equivalent answer. So if their answer was scaled. So for example, if instead of doing zero to 500, you did it zero to five or something like that. We took some points off because you didn't do it exactly the way we specified, but we didn't want to be jerks. And the fact that you gave it a go and you got the right answer, so your logic was solid and you just made a silly mistake, we just took off um, a handful of points. I forget what we did, something like a quarter of the points you would have got or something like that. Eh, I'll double check later. And so, um, oh, also speed points. We award points for speed and currently we give them to the first 1,000 people. So the first person who enters gets 1,000 points, next person gets 999 points, all the way down. This time we had 288 correct entries, which meant that there were loads of speed points left. And even if you put in a correct answer, at the very end of the week, so last thing on Tuesday UK time, if you just got in under the deadline, if you got it right, you would have been the 289th person, you still would have got speed points. So a lot of people did say, a lot of people complained, not complained, a lot of people gave the constructive feedback that it uh, either wasn't fair or was a bit biased depending on what time zone you're in because the videos come out at three o'clock UK time on a Wednesday. And I appreciate for some people that's a terrible time and they can't be up instantly to try and get the puzzle immediately and race to enter. But the, I mean, this makes the point that actually if you'd entered at any point during the week you still would have got speed points. And a lot of people entered quickly and then later found a better solution. And then they emailed, oh, I found a better solution. I'm sorry, because of the speed point thing, we're only taking your first entry. And so if your first entry is incorrect, I'm, I mean, keep trying it. Like the points, well, the, the points aren't the only point. You can keep working on it. And if you do think you've cracked it, you can email and send in something else you've found. But sadly, we're only taking the first one. So don't rush and don't give up. And don't worry if you think you're not going to be there like the second we start accepting solutions because yeah, the whole week you still could have got speed point um, bonuses. So uh, do take part and don't panic too much. It's just a, it's a bit of fun. I know we've got a leaderboard, so it's a bit serious. So we're trying to be fair, but for the most part, they're fun puzzles. Come on. Okay, 
And now the question is, how do you do that in 1733 point? I'm, I'm going to stop saying 0.33. I'm just going to round everything to the nearest whole number from, uh, round down to the nearest whole number from here in. So uh, Eugene sent in this animation, I'll set that going, of a train loading up and traveling. Oh, so Eugene's drawn all the journeys at once for each section, but then they only get colored in uh, red when the trains actually then traveled that part. So you can see they've already um, filled them all in and now they're gradually getting colored as the train goes. And so uh, now it's going to that one there, it's dropping off some fuel. It's got enough to go all the way back because it's picking it up as it goes. It's picking up as it goes forwards. And if you want to think about the solution, you're like, okay, well, I guess the most efficient way to do this is given you can do 500 miles on a tank and you want to minimize return journeys, if that's 800 miles away, at 300 miles out, you want to at some point get there fully stocked with fuel so you can do that last 500 mile, the maximum stretch you can do at the very end, which is why you can see 300 is uh, the, the most distant stockpile. And then you're like, well, how do we get the fuel there? And so here Eugene's showing how you can backwards and forwards a bit to build up the stockpile there. We also had a great, um, uh, this is a plot, it's not animated, but a very nice plot sent in um, by Philip uh, uh, Geisler here, who um, I've actually taken this from a paper that Philip did. Cause you think, well, hang on, how do I know what the optimal amount is? Like sure that's a solution, but how do I know it's the best solution? other than the fact that it's the smallest one we got sent in, which is kind of um, proof by YouTube. So if enough people watch a YouTube video, one or more of them will find the optimal solution. Not a rigorous proof, but a proof sort of, nonetheless. Anyway, if you think about it, you generalize this, you go, okay, if I can't do it in one run, I look at the amount of fuel. So let's call that capital F, the maximum amount of fuel I can have. I can then do some ratio of that out, dump some fuel, and then do the return journey without running out because I make sure I can get back. And so actually that ratio R, let's say, has to be less than half. Because if it's more than half, you can't get back. So you go out R times F, the full amount of fuel. You dump what's left. So actually you dump the full amount of fuel, subtract two times RF, because that's the traveling, and then you go back. And then you're like, well then how am I gonna you know, chain these? And how am I gonna optimize what R is based on F and the total distance to work out the best way to do it? That's exactly what Philip did. They sent in a full paper which I will uh, link to below. And for the two squared train puzzle, fantastic work, Philip. And this is it. So they've done all the working out, they've generalized it, they've got a, a closed uh, function there, and then they show that 1733 is the optimal solution. So I'll link to that below. If you want the full mass working out, Philip has got you covered. Other people uh, sent in uh, spreadsheets that they had used, which we expected because this is the one that Zoe made. This is Zoe who works with me and has been helping out with the puzzles. When we were first discussing it, she built this spreadsheet. You can download this spreadsheet. Well, actually, if you go, you can view it online, but you can't interact or edit it unless you download your own copy. If you download the copy, you can put the capacity and distance up in the yellow squares, and then it will fill it in, and you've got to scroll down to find the green cell somewhere will uh, show you uh, where you should be stopping as you go along. So you go and play with that. We also got sent in um, yeah, Jacob, Jacob, um, and uh, however that's pronounced, and that, as you can see, they also have a surname. Marvelous. Um, so they sent in this one. Again, I'll link to it below. You can, if you download it, you can have um, a play with it. And Melissa Z, so Melissa Z sent in this one. They obviously paid attention to the fact that Zoe, who helps check the solutions and helps me go through all the emails, likes if you can get an emoji uh, in a spreadsheet. And so Melissa, good work. So this is, I mean, it's a suboptimal solution, but that's fine. You've totally made up for it with emojis and a fantastic spreadsheet. So uh, well done, uh, Melissa, for putting that together. Uh, Zoe was very impressed and wanted to give you bonus marks but I said that wasn't fair. So you can blame me. Um, anyway, great work, Melissa. Uh, and you don't have to do it in a spreadsheet. So other people did it uh, like in Desmos. So uh, Sahil, I'll link to your Desmos uh, uh, solution below if you want to download that, have a play with it online. And of course you can use Python. So um, at random, I picked uh, Carl. So loads of people sent in code that worked. So we ran a bunch of it and it was great. Carl, you were picked um, pretty much at random for bringing some great code. And then people tried to play around with the code. So our friend Charlie here uh, had a look at what happens if the capacity is very small compared to the distance. And it's hugely inefficient. 
And so this is what a ratio of one to nine that Charlie's done. And you, you're in um, millions, nearly 10 million uh, multiples of the capacity just to go a distance nine times. So as that ratio gets bad, the fuel efficiency is just horrific. So uh, not a good technique if you actually have to take the train to party town. That's <laughs> a great sentence. Um, okay, so uh, we actually had 296 unique submitted solutions. So great work. And don't forget, if we think you gave it a go, you get the official giving it a go participation points, which are for wrong answers, but you still tried. So we take out ridiculous ones. So some people put in like zero. Ha ha. And some people tried to max it out with the biggest number they could type in. We filter all those out. And we're not going to ever give the actual criteria we're using, but if we think you gave it a proper go, I think we're currently giving like 500 participation points. Everything in terms of scoring is open to review. We're tweaking it as we go along. Uh, so thank you everyone who gave us uh, loads of unique different solutions. The most popular answer was 2000. So there you are. If you put in 2000, then according to the wisdom of the crowd, you were correct. Well done. I mean, not in a literal sense. You weren't actually correct, but you were close. And we had loads of other popular ones. Uh, 3000, 2200. Oh, 1933 was popular. And that's the solution you get if you have the stop off points that I think at 300 and 133, but you don't worry with the 33 then you end up with this uh, almost optimal solution of 1933. And people who sent in cool ways of solving it. So people, I loved, people sent in interesting ways that they solved it and interesting ways that they were able to use to show what their solution was. And in both those cases, even if you weren't totally correct, I still love seeing some of the great stuff that was sent in. So uh, people sent in, uh, Andrew here sent in a, um, a video, which, sorry, Andrew, I'm gonna mute, but they uh, talked through this because they've used cards They've got a, a cross of kings for King's Cross Station. Well done, Andrew. And they've put a corona over at Party Town. And then they use the cards. If I skip through here, you can see they're using the cards to um, show where you're putting and picking up fuel. And the deck is the train. It's all very cool. We also got loads of animations. So uh, well done here. This is by um, Benoit. And uh, Daniel did the artwork. So it's I think it's a unicorn in a train with a rainbow. And Party Town has a square, it looks like an equilateral triangle, curly brackets, and another rainbow, but with fewer colors than the one coming out of the train. So they, maybe it's a protractor, maybe it's a party protractor. So, I mean, you can't have a good party without some regular shapes, curly brackets, and a party protractor, come on. So great work with the animation there, people. And of course, as always, some people used my face without explicit permission. So uh, well done, David. This is an animated GIF which I think, oh, here we go. So they screen grabbed me from the original puzzle video and they animated a solution. So uh, well done. For the most part, for the record, I don't mind people making GIFs out of my videos. And I mean, there are some weird memes out there people have made from my videos and number file ones. But uh, generally speaking, if it's not offensive, I, it's fine, go for it. So, oh, there you are, woo, made it. So uh, great work, uh, David, I, I love what you're doing. Uh, and finally, just because some of these obviously involve a lot of effort, uh, I want to just put in, um, here we go, this is um, this person, Van Boven, who uh, just sent me a photo of their working out. There you are. Don't have to write code, don't have to do a spreadsheet, don't have to animate my face, you can just send me in some maths. So uh, it, you don't have to go above and beyond to end up in the solution video. Although I should say, we get sent in more solutions than we can really include in this video. And I'm very sorry. So uh, I try to read as many as I can. I've got people like Zoe uh, helping me out, um, but we just, just haven't got the time to get through all of them. I've still got other work, um, sadly, but I give it my absolute best go. And the ones that end up in this video are pretty much a random sample. So I just try and pick some random ones. There were loads of other great ones that I couldn't have a chance, didn't have a chance to show. So, so if you do send in some working out, and uh, don't be sad. Like if it's not in this solution video, don't worry. It doesn't mean that I didn't see it and it doesn't mean that it wasn't worth doing it, right? So keep doing uh, solutions to the videos. Keep sending them in. Please use matpluspuzzles at standupmaths.com because I get so many emails. This means I can filter all those out and make sure um, they've got the best chance of being checked. And if you have any other ideas for puzzles, 
then um, let me know. We're, we're going to keep doing this. We're currently doing it weekly, but we're going to keep doing it uh, for as long as we possibly can. So um, there you are. So anyway, I think that's it for now. No new updates. We're, updates. we're still kind of tweaking how we're going to do the scoring. Thank you so much, everyone, who's sending in answers. And again, I'm very sorry if um, you, you've got any complaints. We're just we're doing this for fun, and we're doing the best we can. So I hope you're enjoying it. We're going to keep doing it uh, weekly for a little while, but we'll see what happens as we go along. So I hope you're all uh, keeping safe. And as always, thanks for getting involved.